Good morning, let's stand. Turn to Psalm 116. Number 116, let's sing Victory in Jesus. We'll sing all three of them here on 116. to be in your house, God. Thankful for the day you've given us and this opportunity that you've given us, Lord. And I thank you so much, God, for bringing us here together, Lord, that we can sing about you and that we can worship you, that we can hear your word preached. God, I pray we all take advantage of this time that we have, God. And I pray we glorify you in everything that we do. God, we want to pray, Lord, for this church, for Emmanuel Baptist. We pray, God, that you'll just strengthen Emmanuel Baptist, that we'll do our part in 
seeing more people come. We'll see membership decisions, God, and most of all, we'll see souls saved here, God. We just pray so very much for that. We pray for those names on the prayer list that we heard earlier this morning, God. There's so many names there that we just lift up to you, God. We put them in your hands, God. We just ask that you just, your will be done in all these things, God, and we just leave it with you, God. We pray for those that have lost loved ones here the last uh, few days and weeks, God. We continue to pray for them and uh, we ask that you just comfort them and they, may they seek you for that comfort, God. We want to pray for our junior church across the way, God. We just ask that you continue to bless there. We, we thank you for those teachers, God, that take the time, God. We pray for those kids that you'll continue to, to instill in them your word and that they will understand it and they'll uh, internalize it and they'll use it, God, as they face what they face out in the world at school and so on, God. We just pray for them so very much, God. We Ask, Lord, that you continue to, uh, or that you'll just, um, that your will will be done in these things going on in, in Israel, in the Middle East. God, we just pray so much for that. And we just, God, just, just relying on you, God, for, for what this means. And we just, uh, just ask, the Lord, that you be with those that, uh, that their lives have been taken away, the families of those, God. We just ask that you comfort there, God. And again, we pray your will be done the way it's intended there, God. And, Again, may we rely on you and trust in that, God. We ask that you be with our preacher, Lord, as he brings the message here in just a bit, God. I, I pray we're ready to receive this message, God. And, and I pray, God, if there's anyone out there that, that knows you not as their Savior, that today would be the day that they accepted you for that eternal salvation, and we would all rejoice in that, God. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and be seated. Good to see everybody this morning, and I know we will enjoy the message here in just a few minutes. Let's go to number 84 for our next song, and we won't get the offering, but number 84 here first. Let's sing Mansion Over the Hilltop, all of them here on 84.
And Will, would you and Daryl come up and take the offering up for us, please? And while they're coming, I'll remind you again. On October 25th, a week from Wednesday, we've got a missionary coming, missionary to Columbia. And so we're looking forward to that. Be much in prayer and remember October 25th there. Will, would you lead us in prayer? Our most precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this Sunday morning service. God, I pray for this offering, Lord, that you just bless it. Lord, let our church use it, Lord, to further your kingdom. God, I just uh, want to thank you, God, for the peace that passes understanding. Lord, we see all the stuff going wrong in the world. Lord, and it, it's scary, God, and I just pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that we just don't be afraid, that we just uh, we walk in your light, Father, and walk in your faith. Lord, we know what the, we know what the ending is. And we thank you for it. God, just be with Brother Latimer as he brings our message. Father, we just thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 for our next song 365 tis so sweet to trust in Jesus let's sing the first second and last song on this one 365 special let's go to 109 number 109 we'll sing rock of ages we'll sing them all here on 109 
didn't think it'd get any better. That's good. Mercy, goodness. Turn with me to Daniel in chapter 3. Daniel in chapter 3. Keep your bookmarker there because we're going to spend the bigger part of the time this morning in Daniel in chapter 3. Let's look at the first few verses of this here. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, breadth there, thereof six cubits. He set them up, he set it up in the plain of Dura in the providence of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king went, sent together together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the serfs, and all the rulers of the providence that come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then you'll notice in verse 3, the princes and all of these here uh, are going to come. And then in verse 4, the herald, in other words, this is going to be a person that goes around and cries out as to what's going to go on and so on. He announces these things. Then the Herod crowd uh, allowed to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and language, that at any time ye hear the sound of the uh, cornet, the flute, and all of this here, and if you don't fall down and worship, notice what's going to happen in verse 6. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And then you'll see verse 7, and let's drop down to verse 8. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king uh, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You notice that? You notice how they begin to pump him up and so on? All oh, we want you to live forever, king, in this here. And uh, then you'll notice in verse 11, and then he said, And whosoever falleth not down and, and worship he that should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There were certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Notice the position that they have got in this here. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. And they, they serve not the kings, or not the gods, nor the worship, the golden image which is set up. <coughs> and Neb then Nebuchadnezzar in his, in his uh, rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Now to save time, I hope that you will read the uh, rest of, of this here. And drop down to verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. We've thought about it. We've prayed about it. We've, we've, uh, we've decided this here. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, he will deliver us out of the hand, out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then you notice in 19 and 20, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is very, very mad. Now, what these three Hebrew men did is, is this here. They stood up for what was right. They stood up for what is right. All right? Now, if you and I will stand up for what is right, then it is God's take, it is God's thing to take care of you and I in this here. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We've thought about it. We know that 
we know that you will notice in, uh, in verse 10, Thou, O king, has made a degree. Whenever the king like that makes a degree, that's final. They cannot change it. In other words, it would be like it is infallible in this here. This, uh, he signed this degree. That is it in this here. But these three men are going to say, we're not going to do it. We're, we're not going to do something uh, like this here. They stood up for what was right uh, in this here. Now, it is, God's, it is God's job to take care of them in this here. Sometimes we get this thing kind of turned around a little bit. We'll look and we'll say, God, you do this for me and then I will do this or that for you. But it doesn't work that way. The thing of it works, you and I are to step out by faith and trust in Him in this here, and then He will do this here. Now, we're going to find, because, because the king is going to look at it, let's look at verse 24 and 25. Then now they've cast these three into the uh, burning fiery furnace, all right? You'll notice that they're going to crank the thermostat up. It's going to be much harder, uh, hotter than uh, usual uh, in this here. Then verse 24, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, Did we not? cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Didn't we, didn't we put three guys in here? And they answered and said unto him, uh, O king, true, uh, that's, that's right. And then he answered and said, Lo, I see four. See that? I see four men. You notice they're not bound. They are loose. And you notice something else that they're doing? They're walking. They're walking in this here. Now, you and I know who this fourth one is. We know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were cast in there. You will find when you go back up a little bit, you're going to find he's going to put some of the strongest men that are going to bind them and are going to put them in the fire furnace. Some of the strongest men. They're going to be burned up. They're going to be destroyed in this here. And the king looks and he says, I see four. Well, who's that fourth one? That fourth one is the incarnate Lord in this here. It is Christ in this here. He is the angel of the Lord. Many times we'll see these here. For instance, you don't have to go there. But in Genesis in chapter 18, Abraham... Abraham is sitting at the door of the tent and he looks up and he sees someone coming. Who is it? The angel of the Lord. It is Christ incarnate in this here. In Judges in chapter 5, not Judges, but in, uh, uh, in Joshua in chapter 5, we're going to find before Joshua goes in to the city of Jericho, we're going to find that he looks up and he sees a captain. And he makes a remark, are you for us? Are you against us? There is the incarnate uh, Lord in this here. Now, you'll notice what is happening here in verse 25. These people are walking. Did you know something? That's what you and I ought to be doing. We ought to be walking with him, not running with him, but we ought to be walking with him in this here. You and I can go back to Genesis in chapter 5 and we can see Enid walking with God. We find Enid walked with God and he just went home with him, uh, with the Lord in this here. We find Abraham walking with God. We find Moses walking with God. We find Joshua walking with uh, God. In this here. Now, I said all that to share some things with you uh, in this here. We have problems. We have difficulties in, in, our, in our life. 
uh, in this here. And sometimes we don't realize the Lord is with us, that the Lord is trying to help us in this here. Now, uh, you can write these down because I'll not go to save time. I'll not go and show you all of them. But in Exodus in chapter 3, we find God says to Moses, Moses, and, and he, gets, uh, he gets Moses' attention by the burning of the bush. And the bush doesn't consume. And uh, so Moses is looking at that and here is the incarnate. Here is the voice of the Lord coming out of that bush in this here. Moses, yes sir. I'm going to call you to deliver this nation of Israel out of bondage, out of Egypt. I'm going to, I'm going to call you to do that. And uh, Moses is going to look at him and he's going to say, Lord, uh, I, 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 I'm not qualified to do this. Now you think about this. Here is an 80-year-old man. Here is a man, yes, true, the first 40 years of his life, he was brought up in luxury. He had the, he had the, uh, uh, the best of everything in this here. But, but we find that he slew a man and he fled into the desert. And he's going to stay in the desert for 40 years. Alright? So God is going to call an 80 year old man to deliver a nation of over 2 million is going to bring them out of bondage. You would say, no way. No way can, can that be. But God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make mistakes in this year. When God calls, Chaz was talking about it a while ago in the Sunday school lesson. When God calls, then He ups and He gives us the ability to do these things. God knows. God knows what you and I are capable of doing. He knows this here. Our problem is, and I think it is very, very real in this here, we will not step out. We will not walk with Him in this here. And God tells Moses, Moses, you tell the people that I am that I am. You see that in Exodus and chapter 3. In other words, I am the Almighty God. People have been praying this morning about what's happening over in Israel and so on like this here. The news media forgets uh, this here. They probably don't want to remember. God gave that land to the Jews back in, in the book of Genesis. Alright? And then Arafat, <coughs> with his awfulness uh, and so on, the Jews gave in, the <coughs> Jewish nation gave in to him and, and gave him the Gaza Strip. Did you ever see how much that is in there? It wouldn't take it won't take uh, uh, Israel very long to take care of that Gaza Strip in that. But that's not the Hamas. That's not Palestine in this here. That is the Jewish in in this here. So I look and and God says to Moses, "You tell them I am that I am." Great, great. So then I look and I find about, we say, okay, I'm going to stand, preacher. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand for what is right. It's not an easy thing to do. It surely isn't. And it definitely is not an easy thing to do today. That might take you over to 1 Kings and chapter 19. And going over to 1 Kings in chapter 19, we find a guy by the name of Elijah. We picked him up in chapter 17. And Elijah's going to stand. He's going to stand and he's going to go against Ahab. And he's going to go against Jezebel and so on like this here. It's not going to be an, an easy task. Nor is it today an easy task to stand and, and to uh, stand for what is right in this here. And Elijah 
James in the fifth chapter of the book of James. James tells us that Elijah is a man of like subject like you and I. And he because he gets discouraged, and you and I get discouraged in this here. And so sometimes we'll go to the Lord and we'll say, Lord, I'm the only one. I'm the only one that's standing for what's right. I'm the only one. Uh, uh, I, I'm the only one that's coming to church on Wednesday nights. I'm the only one that I'm the only one that's praying. I'm the only one that's that's wanting to do anything for the Lord. We get to thinking that way sometimes. And if we're not careful, we'll have a pity party, and we'll have that, and and we'll go along in this here. And then as time goes along, here He comes. Here comes the Lord, and He'll often say to us in the latter part of chapter 19 of 1 Kings, He'll look at Elijah and he say, Elijah, there are 7,000 prophets that have not bowed to Ahab. 7,000 in this year. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to ask you, to turn with me to Matthew. Keep your finger here. And let's go to Matthew in chapter 14. Because I want to show something. I want you to see something uh, in, in this here. Because we get to thinking sometimes. Uh, we get to thinking, you know, you know, Lord, I, I, uh, I get to thinking sometimes I'm the uh, I, I'm going through troublesome waters, trying times in my life. Seems like everything I try to do is not right, and so on. And, and uh, it, it can it can work on us. And we get to thinking about this sometimes, and uh, and we'll say, uh, "Gosh, uh, am I not in God's will? Am I not doing what I'm supposed to be doing?" In this here, listen. We have some trying times come to our life, even if we are doing what God wants us to do. Always remember this, and I'm not saying it's easy because it's not. It's not an easy thing. But people, you and I don't grow. We don't grow uh, on a mountaintop. We don't grow on a mountaintop. Okay, we grow in the valley. That's where we grow in the valley. Now I want to show you something. And uh, in chapter 14 of Matthew, you're going to find, you're going to find, and all of us have read it, no telling how many times, we're going to find a storm comes. And the storm is coming there. The waves are high and so on. And the disciples, and it's disciples, the disciples are going to see a figure coming to them and they don't recognize it's Jesus. They don't recognize it. One reason is because they wouldn't expect Him. But I want you to go back for just a second and I want you to look at verse 22 of this chapter. And straightway Jesus constrained His disciples to get into a ship. Now see that? They are in God's will. Okay? They're in God's will. Jesus told them to get in the ship. They get in the ship. Alright, now look at here. And, he, and to go before Him unto the other side. That is what Jesus told them to do. So they're in His will. You and I you and I sometimes are like this here. We have these times come to us and we'll look and we'll say, but I'm being faithful. I'm, I, I, I'm coming to church every time the doors are open. I'm giving like I'm supposed to give. I'm praying like I'm supposed to pray. I'm visiting like I'm supposed to. I'm doing what I ought to be doing. And yet I'm having trouble sometimes. Folks, we had a man come for Sunday school a while ago that absolutely I had no I had no idea how many years I prayed for that man. Daryl's prayed for him. 
I don't know how many years I've prayed for that man. And just the other day I stopped in there uh, to, to visit his brother and he looked at me and said, Preacher, I'm going to come one of these days. And he came to Sunday school a while ago. Amen. Keep praying! Keep praying! Keep working! Keep working! Now I want to show you something. <laughs> and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain to pray. This is Jesus. And when he had evening would come, he was there alone. There's nothing like the sweet fellowship of you and me with the Lord. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. The storm comes. And we're going to see, let's drop over to verse 27. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Would you let me do that? That's quite a, that's quite a, that's quite a question. That's quite a question. You mean to tell me you would like to step out of this boat? Not a calm, gentle sea, but a sea that is, that is raging, and you want to step out of that boat? You want to step out of your security and step in something like this here? We can always criticize Peter. Because Peter denied the Lord three times and Peter done this and Peter done that. And, and, and he made some mistakes. But I'll tell you right now, he had some courage. He had some courage. And if you want God to bless and you want God to help and you want God to answer some of your prayers, you're going to have to learn to step out. Jesus said, Come. And old Peter stepped out. And Peter walked to the Lord. Walked to Him. Isn't that something? He walked it. Then, and I know, I, 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 know, I know what happened. I know that Peter got to looking and he got to watching the waves and so on and he began to sink. Why? He took his eyes off of Jesus. Let me tell you something, people. When you and I take our eyes off the Lord, we're in trouble. We're in big time trouble when we take our Amen. eyes off, of, off the Lord. And it's very easy to do. It's very easy to do. Uh, particularly in the times that we're living today. Get our eyes off, get our eyes on this, <coughs> our eyes on that, and we, and, and we neglect the Lord in this. Well, you know that they're going to uh, Peter begins to sink and Jesus, uh, Peter hollers out, Save me! Jesus reached down and got him uh, in, in this here. Jesus wants to walk with us. He wants, if I'm walking with Him, if I'm walking with Jesus, I'm going to have fellowship with Him. Because I can't, I, I, I can't walk with Jesus and not have fellowship. Can you have fellowship with somebody that you won't walk with? Uh, and so on. So whenever we're walking together, we're having fellowship in this here. Well, you can go over to uh, Acts. And let's go there for just a moment. I wasn't going to ask you to do that. But let's go, to, let's go to Luke in chapter 24. Let's go there for just a second. Luke in chapter 24 uh, in, in this here. And pick him up uh, in, uh, oh, let's pick up in verse 13 of Luke in chapter 24. And behold, two of them went that, uh, went that same way, same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem uh, about three uh, score uh, furlongs. 
And they walked together of all things. They talked together of all things which had happened. And it came to pass and went while they communed together and reason Jesus drew near and went with them. Oh, read the rest of that. He's going to walk with them. They don't recognize Him. They don't recognize Him. That you, you, know, you know one of the things that made Abraham such a great person? Abraham, he made mistakes. He sinned. Abraham did uh, in this here. Ah, but how come God was able to bless Abraham so much in this here? Because Abraham had F-A-I-T-H. I hope I spelled that right. <laughs> he had faith. He was able to step out in this here. Moses stepped out. Joshua stepped out. On and on in, in these things here. We walk with them in this here. But let's go back to uh, uh, go back to Daniel chapter three because I I want to share something with you uh, in in this here. We'll have things to happen to us and. Uh, such as in 2 Corinthians in chapter 12. Paul had this thorn in the flesh. I don't know what it was. I have, I have no idea. I have read commentaries and this one said that's what it is and this one said that's what it is and so on. I don't know what, I don't know what uh, it was, but I know he had a thorn in the flesh. And I know this. I know that he said, I went to the Lord three times. I, I went to the Lord three times and I asked Him to remove it. Three times. And He finally said to me, Paul, yes, my grace is sufficient. You go on. You go on in, in this here. Well, I found this of Oswald Chamber made, uh, made this remark here. What can't be cured must be endured. And sometimes people stop. They stop coming to church. They stop doing the things that they ought to be doing because they have something and they can't seem to get rid of it or overcome it in this year. They never think about, you know what? Maybe I have to endure this. Maybe I... Maybe I'm just to, to go on in this thing here. Now if we will, we're going to find that the Lord is going to come and He's going to help us and He's going to comfort us in these things here. Now, so we're going through these times of difficulties and so on like this here. And we're going to say, where can I get help? Where can I get... I, I, heard, I heard that Jesus was going to die. And in fact, I heard in John in chapter 14, Jesus said to His disciples, You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. Well, I'm waiting for that rapture. I'd like for that rapture to take place uh, any time here. Uh, one of the old saints and I were sitting at the uh, uh, nursing home yesterday morning and you say, Oh, preacher, you call, you call that woman old. Well, 102 is not young. Okay, and she knows... She knows that she's in this here. But I want to show you something. And I want you to turn with me to John in chapter... Keep your finger here in Daniel and look at John in chapter 16 for just a moment uh, in this here. Okay? Now, listen to, uh, listen to verse 7 uh, of this here. John in chapter 16 and verse 7. Jesus speaking. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. In other words, I've got to go away, he said. I've got to do it. 
I've got to go. This is the Father's will that I go away. All right, look here. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him uh, unto you. You know what the Comforter is? He's the Holy Spirit. You know what He's going to do? He's going to help us. As we walk, as we fellowship with the Master, as we do all of these things here, then these things that come in our life, then He's going to help us. Now, I've not experienced everything, but He has. He has experienced everything. He knows, he knows the answer to every problem. I don't know the answer to, to the problem. I, I, I know this. There's times I like to run. I know that. I know a few weeks ago, whenever the, the dermatologist looked at me and he said, uh, he said, you know what? We've got to go in your head. We've got to take care of, the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the, your uh, head here in this year. I didn't want to hear that, but I knew I had to go on in this thing here. Listen, He understands all of these things here. I don't understand all of it in this here. And the comforter simply means one alongside. Now watch this. When He has come, He will prove the world of sin and of righteousness judgment of the sin because they believe it not. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more in this here. Now, where's he at today? He's at the right hand of the Father. Hebrews tells us that he's at the right hand of the Father. What's he doing in this here? He's interceding for you and I in this here. We can look and we can go back to, to Deuteronomy or Daniel in chapter 3 uh, in, in this here. And we can say, we can look back and old Nebuchadnezzar said, Man, I tell you what, I put I had three men put in the fire furnace. It was so hot that the guys that put them in there were burned up. But I look at these three and I smell of their clothes and I don't smell any smoke. I don't smell any smoke on, smoke on their clothes in this here. And yet, I looked and I seen these guys walking in the fiery furnace in, in this here. How were they able to overcome this? They stood for what is right. Stood for what is right. If you and I will do what is right. If we'll be faithful, if we'll be obedient, if we'll give, if we'll do the things that we should do, I'll guarantee you God's going to up and He's going to hold up His, his uh, uh, business of, of this thing here. He's not going to let us go in this here. And I say to you this morning, have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Have you come to Him and have you confessed your sin to the Lord Jesus Christ and know that He forgave you of your sins? Have you done that? Have you done that? You don't confess your sins to me. No way. No way. There's nothing I can do about it. But we, can, we have a Lord that does, a Lord that loves us, a Lord that went to the cross. And in the seventh chapter of the book of Hebrews, he said this, Thou prepared a body for me. He left the celestials of heaven, and he came and he was born in a manger where the old cattle would come and eat out of that manger. Not in a, not in a palace, but in a manger. He lived a life of poverty. A life of poverty. Oh, man. 
He didn't have a donkey to ride. He didn't have a house to live in. Did you know that? He never had, he never had a place that he could call his own. Time and time again, you'll see him come to Bethany. And he'll come to Bethany, and where will he stay? He'll stay with Mary and Lazarus and Mary Magdalene. He'll stay with them in, in this here. Martha and Mary and, and Lazarus, they were his cousins. And he would stay with them in this here. He came to die that you and I might have life. That might have life. You say, how do we get saved? How do we get rid right with God? You come to an old-fashioned altar or somewhere. Amen. And you take the Word of God and you look at the Bible. And it shows you how you can get saved. It's simple. It's the greatest thing that you'll ever do in your life is receive Christ as your Savior. Don't let the opportunity go by. Come this morning. Come this morning. You have time. You come and receive Christ as your Savior. As we pray. And heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Lord, you know the hearts and the souls of all of these folks. My Lord, I pray that there's one here that's not saved, that they'll step out this morning and come to this altar here. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for dying upon the cross. Thank you for shedding that precious blood that day. That blood washes away our sins. Oh, what a, what a treasure that is. Bless now. Forgive us of our sins. For I ask it in thy name. Amen. Let's stand and go to 394. 394, let's sing, I surrender all. Amen.
Well, I pray for the leaders of this country. I pray that they start seeking you before they make any decisions. Lord, I just want to thank you for all the love, mercy, and grace that you show us each and every day, Lord, and pray that we never take it for granted. Lord, I pray for the ones who haven't been here for a while, Lord. I pray that you stir their hearts, Lord, and uh, get them back in here. There's, there's no other place they need to be, Lord. Lord, thank you again for bring, uh, shedding your precious blood for nobody like me, Lord, giving me a chance of eternal life. I want to thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I pray that you forgive us where we fail to you. ask these things in your precious name. And pray your will be done in all things. Amen. Amen. Amen.